What's good? This is JVB representing SPD and that is sportsperdium.com. I'm going to keep this real simple. The Bears offensive struggles starts and end with Matt Nagy. Matt Nagy was brought here to the Bears specifically to groom Mitch Trubisky. Everybody already knows the situation. Mitch Trubisky was the number two overall pick in the 2017 draft. Ryan Pace went up one spot, yada, 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 to get Mitch Trubisky. We all know the whole situation. But Ryan Pace wants to bring in his own head coach. They fired John Fox, and, and that was cool, you know, because John Fox, you know, he was old as hell. He couldn't tell his left foot from his right foot, you know, and he had Dow Loggins as the offensive coordinator, but... He couldn't really coordinate anything. He probably couldn't even coordinate a dinner reservation at Chicago Cut. But nevertheless, they let John Fox go. They got rid of Dow Loggins. And they wanted to bring in Matt Nagy from Kansas City because all the talk was that Matt Nagy was an offensive genius. That he was this young offensive genius and he was a former quarterback. He was getting all of his offensive tutelage from one Andy Reid. So the Bears go out and they hire Matt Nagy. And... The first season was really good. The Bears were really good. You know, Matt Nagy was the coach of the year. We don't want to get into how that season ended, but it was a good year for the Chicago Bears. And it was a good first year for Matt Nagy. And as far as the offense that season, you know, it was it was decent. You know, it was like, I think it was below average. But still, with Mitch Trubisky in his first full season, to go along with Matt Nagy, the first year head coach, you know, this was their first year together. It was pretty good. You know, it was pretty decent. And at the very least, it gave you that mindset. You know, if you were a Bears fan, you know, and you had this season. You had this really good season. The defense was balling. Obviously, they got Khalil Mack as well that offseason. But the defense was set. And then you had the head coach of Matt Nagy, who all the players loved. You know, everybody loved Matt Nagy. He, he didn't have the great year offensively that everybody may have liked. But... The promise was there. The potential was there in Mr. Trubisky in his offense. But then we go into the next season. Last season, 2019. Everybody thought that in the second year with Matt Nagy as the head coach, the offensive coordinator as well, you got Mr. Trubisky in his second full season. We were optimistic with this offense. We were optimistic with Mr. Trubisky. And not everybody. I know everybody wasn't all on board, but... For the most part, the majority of the Bears fans, they were all in on his offense. And to go along with what the defense did that previous season, the Chicago Bears, they they were a Super Bowl favorite. Like, literally, the Bears had one of the highest odds to win the Super Bowl last season. And I remember all the anticipation, you know, for that Thursday night game. It was the first game of the NFL season. Thursday night football, the Green Bay Packers come into Soldier Field to take on the Chicago Bears, the NFC North champions in prime time on Thursday night. And boy, for this offense, it was a bad ass performance. Not a good badass, a bad badass. And Bears fans everywhere, you know, they were like, it's okay. It's only one game. I'm going to stay optimistic. I'm going to believe in Matt Nagy that he will right this ship and he will get his troops to play better. Get Mr. Trubisky to play better. So it's all good. You know, I'm going to sweep this under the rug and let's look forward to next week. Next week come along. Same old shit. Then I believe they played Washington. I don't remember, but they played a bad team. And Mr. Trubisky had like three touchdowns in that game. I believe it was a Washington game on Monday Night Football. It wasn't a sexy performance from Matt Nagy in this offense. And then the next week goes. And the week after that. 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 Somewhere along that time, Mr. Trubisky got hurt in the Minnesota game. But Mr. Trubisky was out. So Chase Daniel was in. Chase Daniel proved... Uh, he, he proved who he was, a career backup quarterback. Mr. Trubisky eventually comes back, and I, I forgot exactly when he came back, but I do remember that New Orleans Saints game from last year. I remember it vividly because I was doing audio only at that time. I wasn't doing actual videos. I was doing audio, but I was watching the game, and the game was so bad. You guys remember this game. 
I was so pissed off that the offense looked so bad, this team in general looked so bad, that I just start recording early. I was recording the Bears recap video before the whole game was even over. I was that pissed off. It was at that time where I finally gave up on Mitch Trubisky. But fast forward to present day. This offense is still no good. But now, instead of Mr. Trubisky being the quarterback, the quarterback is Nick Foles. And has Nick Foles been any good? No, not really. Would I still take Nick Foles over Mr. Trubisky? Me personally, yes. Because even though Mr. Trubisky has the athletic advantage, Nick Foles is the smarter quarterback. Nick Foles, and this is not all the time, obviously, but when you need to make a throw, Mr. Trubisky has not made the throws. Nick Foles, he's made some throws. I'll give him that. But what I'm trying to say is, Matt Nagy was brought in as the offensive genius, a quarterback guru. He was going to help this young high draft pick in Mitch Trubisky be a good quarterback. Not only has Matt Nagy not done that, this team had no draft capital, but insisted on trading a fourth round pick to Jacksonville for Nick Foles. So Matt Nagy has already failed. So now Nick Foles is the quarterback. And Nick Foles, you know, I pick him over Mr. Trubisky, but Nick Foles ain't a good quarterback. But the big thing for me is that Matt Nagy can't adjust. You're supposed to be an offensive genius. Yes, you have two below average quarterbacks. But if you're such an offensive genius, why can't you work with that? And it's not like the Bears don't have some offensive weapons. They may not be the elite, but you have an elite wide receiver in Allen Robinson. You have a rookie in Darnell Mooney who's played really well. Anthony Miller, he be dropping the ball, but Anthony Miller is a decent wide receiver. You got Jimmy Graham who I was against signing, but Jimmy Graham has shown that at his advanced age that he can still play in this league. You have David Montgomery who's not getting a lot of yards per run because the offensive line is trash. But still, David Montgomery is a very capable receiver, and we've seen that this season. But still, Matt Nagy does not know what the hell he's doing. He still goes out there, and he's trying to be cute with gadget plays. That shit ain't going to work. Keep it simple. Stupid. I know Nick Foles is not a good quarterback, but when he tells you, on Thursday night a few weeks ago against Tampa Bay. Push the ball, push the ball, push the ball. The defense is tired. We got them. Let's push the ball. And you go out and you say, no, we're going to just play it like it is. We're going to take our time. Why? This ain't the type of offense that's methodical, that's going to take up a lot of time, drive down the field, kill a lot of clock, and score touchdowns. This is not that offense. Better yet, what is this offense? Matt Nagy needs to either A, Tear out all the pages in that playbook. Just keep the ones that work. Or B, take a step back and let one of the other offensive minds in that office. Let them be the coordinator. You, Matt Nagy, don't worry about that. Just be the head coach. Just worry about the whole roster and preparing those guys for the next week. From everything that I heard, and it's still been the same, you know, Matt Nagy, is a good player's coach. People like Matt Nagy. Maybe not Nick Foles, but <laughs> for the most part, everybody like Matt Nagy. And I'm kind of joking about the Nick Foles thing because Nick Foles is a good guy. You know, he's a consummate professional. They just got they just got some issues going on right now. They they talking about wristbands and all that shit. Like it don't matter if it's on a wristband, on the headset, in the helmet. If you talk to him face to face verbally, hell, you can draw the play up and say it. It don't matter. The play most likely, it ain't gonna work. This offense is broken. This offense has no identity. And Matt Nagy really needs to check that ego at the fucking door and really consider letting go of the offensive coordinator duties. Either that or dumb it the fuck down. Because obviously, there's too many plays in that playbook that don't work. And maybe they do work for another team. Maybe it does work for another personnel, but it don't work for the Bears. It don't work for Nick Foles and Mr. Trubisky as quarterback. So Matt Nagy, being an offensive genius, tailored to your players. When Mr. Trubisky was the quarterback, you should have ran more RPO. You should have ran him out the pocket. More rollouts. Play actions. 
You should have did more of that. Now that Nick Foles in the lineup, he's not athletic. You got a bad offensive line. Three-step drop. Get the ball out of his hands. And maybe he can get in the rhythm. Maybe if you keep it up tempo, everybody will get in the rhythm. Not just your quarterback, but your offensive line, your receivers, your running backs, everybody. But honestly, I just think Matt Nagy needs to give up the offensive play calling duties. But more than likely, everything's going to stay the same. We got to do this better, that better, this better, that better. But at the end of the day, you, Matt Nagy, you need to do better. But I'm out. Like the video and share the video. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take it easy. God bless. Peace.